Today we are working on doors. I've got a door behind me, it will not latch. You shut it, I'll show you what happens. You shut it, it does not latch. What is the issue? Well, the issue is that the striker, this is, this part of the door that actually goes into the dam, the striker is a little too low and it's hitting the strike plate. And the strike plate has that opening in it, you have the striker, it should come into here and it locks. Well, it's a little low, so it's hitting the plate. And what needs to happen is the hinges need to be shimmed. Now I'm gonna show you how to figure out how you shim the hinges because in the case of this door, I need to shim the bottom hinge. I've got another door where the top hinge needs to come in and the only way to make it come in is to get a chisel and to cut away the actual wood so the hinge is farther inboard. So I'm gonna show you how to do that exactly, but if you've got a door that's not shutting, check where the striker's at the hinge plate because in mine, in both cases, the striker's coming below the hinge plate the striker has a beveled edge on it where it'll hit the plate and it insert into the slot. Well, if it's too low, it can never get past that plate. And that's the problem with both my doors. Both my doors are sagging. I don't know whether it's gravity. I don't know whether it's just poor installation or what. The house has been around a while. So I'm guessing it's just gravity. Things have settled and sagged over time. But I'm going to show you exactly how to fix your doors. These are the tools I'm using today. Just a simple screwdriver. Uh, I use a flathead to pry out the hinge pins. The hinges are actually probably a Phillips head bit. These are just a shim, you know, it kind of lets you put over whatever thickness you need. Probably on the thinner side will be fine. A chisel, these are sharp. This will help you cut out the hinge in case it needs to open up that gap. Then just a hammer, you might need to use the screwdriver and conventional the hammer to pry the hinge pins out. Uh, you will definitely need the hammer for the chisel. Uh, and that's it. I mean, you need these tools, you'll be able to fix this door right up. So this is the strike plate, the strike you can see it's beveled, so it'll go right into the latch plate, which is right here. And so you can see on this one what the problem was. You can see this is where the striker's been rubbing, and it just got a little too low to where the bottom of the striker was hitting right there. It's supposed to be, you want it kind of in the middle here, so that bevel, it'll come right across there and slide right into there. When you get too low like this, and it's hitting on that bottom plate, it won't. So, you know, you can look at your strike plate, your latch plate, and see if it's rubbing. You can just shut it and try to look right at that crack. Now this one I've already fixed. You can see, there it is. Slides right into there, that's what you want. Before I fixed it, it was a little too low, so it was not sliding into there. But yeah, if you can't see it, just put a pencil mark right in there, that way you can open it up, and you can just kind of you can run it around and see what's going on. But this is your latch plate, your strike plate. This is your striker, your latch. So how do you know which hinge needs to be shimmed? So if you look at this gap, this is a pretty decent gap, and I'm judging that just based on kind of this other side. You want your gaps to be about level, so yeah, it's about eighth of an inch. That is about an eighth of an inch. But if you go down here, this is about three, six, yeah, my door's dirty. Don't hold it against me, man. I got kids, I got dogs. So this is about three, six, an inch. So I know that since this gap is bigger than kind of nominal, the door needs to come this way. Has to come this way, it means I need to hinge that shim and you just push in behind the hinge, it'll push out just enough, and it, the door should latch at that point. First up, I always shut the door, that way it's not gonna fall any which way. I just use screwdriver, straight edge, get these hinge pins out. They should come right out, if not, you just hit the screwdriver with a hammer, that'll help them pull out. You gotta get the top one and the bottom one. Pins are out, I usually, Try to keep track of which is the top pin and which is the bottom pin. Probably doesn't make a difference. I'm just being overly specific. But I know in some of my doors, you have some doors that they will, if you kind of leave them half open, they'll just swing open all the way, and that can be annoying. So what you can do is, you gotta be careful, but if you take the hinge pin, I don't think anybody's like this, but if you take it and you just kind of hit it on the edge to bend it ever so slightly, super slight, just bend it enough. Um, like, really just put it on the edge of the counter, just kind of hit it with a hammer lightly. Uh, that will give enough resistance or go on just swing open. So hey, there's a fix for free. If your door's swinging open, just put a little bit of a bend in the hinge pin. You don't want to do a ton, because if you bend it crazy, well, it's not even gonna fit in the slot. But if you bend it just a little bit, it provides just enough friction to where it won't swing open. So I've done that a few of my doors, so I try to keep track of which pin it switched, just in case there's you know, some kind of keying system to it. I don't know. So once the pins are out, just pull your door out, open it slightly, grab one end, pull it off the Hinges. Door is out. So now the door's off. I know it's the bottom hinge that it needs to shim out. And I'll show you how to do that. I haven't decided whether to shim the hinge on the door. Since the 
hinge is pretty flush with the jam. I'm gonna do the door. I just don't want it sticking out past the jam and just find a cleaner look. Step one is to remove the hinge. I'm just using a regular screwdriver. I found it on my junk drawer, not even one of the fancy ratcheting ones, not even a drill or driver, just a regular little screwdriver. It'll be likely three screws. You just pull it right out like so. Keep up with your screws, you lose those. It will be kind of difficult to put everything back together and have it in working order. So the hinge is off. So these are my shims, just you know, big box, regular shims. I'm gonna be using this thinner end because I really I need like an eighth of an inch or so. So you just kind of cut this until you kind of figure out which size you need. I'm just kind of guessing, you know, just figure it out. Because again, I know my door only needs to move a little bit and just a little bit of a shim will push the door out, you know, a fair amount. Where if your door is maybe sagging that much, shim that big, yeah, it might fix it. Here are my shims in place. I just kind of cut them to fit because I want the hinge fitting well against the door. I don't want it wobbling because I only put a hinge on one side or the other. So I try to create an even distribution of shims. Uh, I think this width, you can see, they aren't super wide. I just put what I thought would be good. I'm gonna put the hinge back on, I'm gonna test it. Now, obviously, if I test it, it still doesn't latch. Maybe I should a little bit more, maybe I can eyeball it, but I feel very confident that this will work. Putting the hinge back, the opposite of putting it on, just, you know, put the screws back on. Make sure your shims stay in place. You know, since they're just kind of sitting there, they may want to slide around. Try to like put the center screw in there so that'll hold them in place while you're putting everything else back on. All right, so you put the door back in. I will usually try to kind of get the top hinge in place. Watch your fingers because it does want to pinch. Once that top is on there, latch it. The bottom one is not in place, slide in place. Put your pins back in. You may need a hammer to get those back in place. Sometimes they can be a bit stubborn. All right, the pins are back in place. Now it is time to see whether it will latch. Oh, look at that. Can't open it because it latched perfectly. That's set. That is it. All we had to do was shim that bottom hinge. I've got another door to where the gap was perfect at the bottom and it was way too small at the top. So the hinge needs to come in. So I need to use a chisel to cut out, like cut out that hinge, push it that way into the jam just a little bit, you know, kind of the size of the shim, like a 16th inch of a shim I used on this one. Well, I need to cut out 16th of the other door. I'm going to show you that door. I'm going to show you what the gap looked like and how I fixed it. Uh, you know, chisel, you can get a little rough on that. You want to be careful because it is very easy to kind of tear stuff up. The good thing is you've got the hinge over top of it, so, you know, nothing really shows. Just, you want to be careful. You don't want to cut out too much. You cut out too much, not a big deal. Shim that to get it back in place. Uh, that's what it is. So, let's check out that other door. Here's door number two. So, you see that gap? Looks pretty good, right? I mean, that's, that's not a huge gap. That looks pretty good. Well, as you come up, you see right here, that is a super tight gap. Uh, it needs to come this way, so I can't shim it, so I need to chisel out the jam and the hinge. So I'm just taking a hammer and chisel, and I have just cut out what I thought was right on the jam, and it's just it's normal chisel, so you know, I've just been hammering. That. You don't want to take a lot out. You want to take a little bit at a time. You want to try to keep it even. Uh, you know, the good thing is, even if you mess up, it's not really going to show the hinge recover all that. But just take a small pass at a time, try to go all the way back, uh, and cut it out. That's what I've done. It is quite, it's a little bit shorter, right? You know, 16 inches, that's what I was aiming for. Uh, you know, once in those corners, it is around the corners, let's try to kind of dig out the chisel to keep it even, to cut it down. It's been cut down. Hopefully it works. I think it will. So how did we do? This was our gap before, you know, pretty decent gap. You follow it up. The gap is larger now. And is it large enough to latch? Yes. It latches. So perfect. Both doors are fixed. They latch. And you can either shim it or you can cut it out. So I've just showed you a way to fix doors that are not latching. Now to kind of back up and go a little more in depth in the preparatory work. First off, both these doors, I kind of opened them and shut them to look at, well, where does a strike hit the plate? Because I, in my experience, that's usually the problem. The doors are just sag, the house is settled, things have happened, gravity's just worked its might on these doors. So first, 
make sure that's it. You know, you can you can see where your strike is hitting the plate. And if you can't quite see it, well, don't quite shut your door. Just put it close to where the strike is touching the jam trim. Just put a line with pencil on the trim. And now that way you know the door kind of see where that line intersects the plate and make sure that's your problem. Could be there's something in the hole for the strike plate. I don't know. Probably just your door sag. So from there, just look at your gaps. Your gaps should be even all the way around. That's how it was when it was first installed. So if you have a, you know, if you have a gap at the top that's perfect and at the bottom it is too tight, well, you need to cut out for that hinge. You need to use a chisel and try to get an even cutout to open up that gap. Now, if that gap is too wide, well, you need to shim to close that gap up. So find out on your door which gap is good, which one's wrong. That's your cover. If they're both, they're just terrible. I don't know what to tell you, man. You know, maybe you just need to shim them both, but chances are it's just it's gonna be one or the other will fix it. So that's it. Your doors will latch, because it's just annoying when they don't latch. You know, you have to like jerk them up and down. And I mean actually this door for a long time, you, you know, if you jerk it up, it'll latch because again it'd sag. Well, what I had done, I noticed was it kind of wallowed out the holes in the bottom uh, hinge because that's when you're jerking those hinges, the hinges aren't meant to go up and down, they're meant to just hold that door against the wall. So if you don't fix it, you'll create other problems. Your doors are hopefully fixed. Screwdriver, chisel, maybe hammer and shim. Shims, you get a big box hardware store. You can get like a pack of 40 for very little. Uh, you don't need a pack of 40, but maybe you have a lot of doors. I, mean, I, I find I have a lot of uses for it. I'm rambling now. You've got the fix. We're done here. See you later.